Okay, ionic compounds. So we're looking in this video at naming and writing formulae of ionic compounds. So a quick refresher, your periodic table reference sheet. Remember the charges on groups 1, 2, 13, 15, 16, and 17. Remember the metals are on the left side of the staircase, nonmetals are on the right. And anything in the yellow box needs a Roman numeral except for zinc, which has a two positive charge, and silver, which has a positive one charge. Okay, and secondly, we'll have the polyatomic ion list, which is uh, supposed to be at your fingertips, as well as the classical names of the copper, iron, tin, and lead ions. Okay, so now to move on with the note here. Ionic compounds are, as the name suggests, made up of ions. We always have a cation first and an anion second. Typically, that cation is a metal ion and the anion is a nonmetal ion, but you will remember, as you saw on the polyatomic ion list, that ammonium is a positively charged ion, positive one charge. And so occasionally you will see an ionic compound that doesn't have a metal ion to begin, it has ammonium as the cation. You will also see compounds where the hydrogen ion is positive one. Now that's something I didn't mention before that although hydrogen is located on the left side of the periodic table in group one, it is, it is a non-metal, it's not a metal. And so, uh, but the hydrogen atom commonly forms positive one charged ions and so you will see it show up um, in these types of compounds. For the anions, you will typically have an IDE ending. These will be for the binary ionic compounds, um, but occasionally you will also see ATE, ITE, some other endings. Those aren't the only ones. Even occasionally there is an ID, IDE ending, for example, cyanide or hydroxide. But you will see the names of those on the polyatomic ion list. And so it's very helpful for you to have that handy for reference. So let's look then at the method for writing formulas of ionic compounds. Okay, so we are going to use the Crosstown method to write formulas of ionic compounds. First, we'll write the symbols and charges if we use a polyatomic ion, we'll be sure to put brackets. For example, with the sulfate ion here, you see I've put the brackets around the SO4 <clears throat> and put the charge outside the brackets as a superscript. So you have the symbols and charges. We're gonna cross down the numbers, omitting the signs, and then reduce if possible. If we have subscripts of one in the final answer, we're going to omit them. That means leave them out erase them. And we're going to omit brackets if the subscript is 1 right after the bracket. So we'll see some examples of how that works. Okay, so using the crosstown method, calcium bromide. Hopefully you have your periodic table handy and you can find the symbol for calcium with the charge. Do the same for bromide, except you're going to find that this IDE ending isn't the same as the element name. So yes, you're looking for bromine. I-N-E. Okay, so hopefully you found calcium with a two positive charge and the symbol BR with a negative one charge. Okay, and so we cross down our, char our numbers here, the two crosses down and the one from the one negative crosses down and we have C-A-B-R-2. You'll notice that I checked <clears throat> that I checked the subscripts here, one to two, to see if they reduce. As soon as you have a one in your ratio, that is in lowest terms, and so it doesn't reduce. I'm going to omit the one in my final answer. So there's the final answer in the red box. Okay, find chromium on your periodic table. When you see that Roman numeral, that's a hint for you that chromium is in the transition metal section, or else it might have been tin or lead, but we can see that it's not. So, the point of the Roman numeral is to tell us the charge on the chromium ion, which means that there is more than one charge possible for chromium, but specifically in this compound, it's three positive. The sulfide ion, again a sulfur atom, 
become stable by gaining two electrons and forms the S2 negative ion. <clears throat> Moving on, we cross down the numbers, so the 3 and the 2, and we form Cr2S3. 2 to 3 is a ratio that is in lowest terms, and so we are complete at that point. Okay, moving into ferrous oxide, magnesium nitrate, and so on. You will need your periodic or your list of polyatomic ions. You will need the classical names of a few of those metal ions, for example, the ferrous ion here. Uh, so go ahead and try the cross down method and then check back with the video to check your answers. Okay, and so I've written the symbols and charges of the ions. I thought it might be helpful if I show my work as I'm forming the final answers here. And so I cross down the twos and as I check to see two to two is a ratio that can be reduced. I can divide two divided by two and two divided by two to finish with FeO. And I will omit those ones in my final answer. Crossing down the numbers from magnesium and the nitrate, notice that I put nitrate in brackets as we said before, so we have a 2 outside the brackets there and a 1 here. 1 to 2 does not reduce any further, and so we finish with Mg bracket NO3 bracket 2. Now, just a point, I decided to keep the brackets because this number here was a 2. If that had been a 1, I would have erased the brackets, but in this case it wasn't, and so we finish with including the brackets. Iron 2 phosphate, and so the 2 comes down outside and the 3 comes down outside. I'd like to emphasize it's the numbers outside the brackets that we look to reduce. You don't want to change the 4 of the phosphate because then it won't be phosphate anymore. So we're not looking at that at all. So forget about the 4, we're just looking at the numbers outside of the brackets when we try to reduce. 3 to 2 is in lowest terms, and so we're finished there. We have Fe3 bracket PO4 bracket 2, and there's our final answer. Ammonium chloride, we take the 1 and cross the 1 down. We take the 1 from the 1 negative and cross that down. And being that we have 1s outside of the brackets, they're already in lowest terms. We're going to omit the ones, and since this one came after the brackets, we're also going to omit those brackets. And so the final answer here is ammonium chloride NH4Cl. Aluminum phosphite, we'll cross our three here and cross our three here. And again, check to see if the numbers can reduce. Yes, three divided by three is one, three divided by three is one. Do not touch the three right here. That's part of the phosphite. Never change that. Look only at the numbers outside of the brackets for reducing. And so we finish with those ones, which means we don't need the ones. And, you know, with a one that was outside here, that means I can actually erase the brackets. And so final answer here is ALPO3. Looking at sodium sulfite, I'm going to cross a one down here and a two down here. And so we'll finish with Na2, and I do not need the brackets because of the one outside the brackets, so Na2SO3. Okay, so there's several examples to show you a number of different options for writing these ionic compounds. Let's look now at how to form uh, the names given the formulas. Okay, so to name ionic compounds, we just need to name the cation and the anion that make up the compound. Sometimes you'll need a Roman numeral, depends if that metal comes from a yellow boxed area in your periodic table, transition metal or tin or lead. Now, the anion may have an ending of IDE, for binary compounds it will, or it might be the ending from one of those polyatomic ions, an 8, it, even an IDE like hydroxide. So have the reference sheet beside you so that you can look those up quickly. Okay, so starting with example A here. So we see the symbol of Li and we see the symbol of O. And although you may immediately know the name of this compound, I'd just like to emphasize that it is the lithium positive one ion and the oxide ion that is making up this compound. Now, 
I'm bothering to do this right now just so that you're really clear about why we name this compound the way we do. And as we move through the course, your understanding of the ions that make up these compounds is going to help you in numerous ways. So I encourage you to uncross the charges or look on your periodic table to see what the charges are of the cations and anions here and become really comfortable with identifying those symbols and charges. And so we name the cation lithium and we name the anion oxide. So the name of Li as an atom is a lithium atom and when you have a charge it's a lithium ion. So we do not change the name of the metal when we're talking about the atom or the ion. But for the nonmetals, we do. So an oxygen atom, but it's an oxide ion. And so that's something to be really clear about, that you have the IDE ending here for the oxide ion. Okay, so checking out the calcium, or CaF2 here. So can you undo this and figure out which positive and negative ion, the cation and anion, formed this compound? So hopefully you're thinking Ca2 positive and F negative. And so the name of the calcium ion is calcium, just the same as the name of the atom. And the name of the F negative 1 ion, being that it's a negative ion, we change the ending from INE to IDE. And so we have calcium fluoride. Now in each of examples A and B, the metals were from group 1 and group 2. So they're not in our multivalent metal section, and so no need to use Roman numerals. Moving on, you'll need your polyatomic ion list handy. Hopefully you're looking at this and thinking of the ammonium ion and the carbonate ion. And so we finish here with ammonium carbonate. Okay, what are the two ions that make up PBCl4? So we know that lead could possibly have a 2 positive or a 4 positive charge. This Cl over here definitely has a negative 1 charge. You find it on the periodic table in group 17. So how can we figure out the charge on this lead ion? Well, we can. Well, there's a number of different ways we can do this. And I'd say this is the hardest part of this lesson now. One way to do it is to call the unknown charge x, fill in any subscript of 1 that isn't showing there, label the charge of the anion as negative 1, and then write an algebraic equation. The subscript of 1 down here multiplied by x plus 4 times negative 1 will equal 0 because what I wrote originally in blue is neutral. And so we'd have 1 times x plus 4 times negative 1 equals 0. We'll have x minus 4 equals 0. As we solve for x, we'll see that x equals 4. And so we finish with lead 4 chloride. So that's one way to do it and it always works. Let's look at a second method. If we started with that PBCL4, I'll just rewrite it here. If we decide to uncross the subscripts, so this 4 comes back up here to be 4 positive, and this 1 comes back up here to be 1 negative, then we just need to check. Check that charge of the chloride ion, PBCL4. Check the Cl. Is it negative 1? If it is, then that means that this is correct. So check to see if the negative ion has the correct charge. And if it does, then that tells you that uncrossing gave you the right answer. Now, let's move on to E and F. As we see, we notice that, first of all, there are three capital letters. As soon as I see three capital letters, I know three elements are involved. So there's definitely a polyatomic ion here. When you don't see brackets in the question, I would definitely open brackets after the metal and then go all the way to the end of the formula, close the brackets and put a 1. And so that's marking for us that there is one sulfate in this package and one copper. 
Okay, so we're looking to identify the ions. Copper positive something, not sure, it's multivalent. And sulfate, we know from our table, is negative 2 or 2 negative. So you can either fill in that negative 2 and call the copper charge x. And so we go with the numbers outside the brackets. 1 times x plus 1 times negative 2 equals 0. So 1 times x plus 1 times negative 2 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2. And that will give us copper 2 sulfate. Or we could have tried the uncrossing method. So I'll just move up a little bit so I have a little bit more space here. Look at the CuSO4. If we had gone and put the brackets in, which is essential, you definitely have to do that, then we uncross the 1. So we end up with positive 1 here and negative 1 here. Now when you check the sulfate, is sulfate negative 1? In fact, you're going to find out that it's supposed to be negative 2. So what do we have to do to that charge of negative 1 to make it correct? Well, we need to double this in order to get the correct charge. So that means we need to double this in order to get the correct charge on the copper. And so positive 1 times 2 will equal positive 2, and there's your copper 2 sulfate. So when you uncross, you must check the negative ion to see if it's correct. And if it is, great, then when you uncross the metal, it was fine, just like our lead 4 chloride example. But when you uncross, if the negative ion isn't correct, multiply to make it correct, and whatever you multiplied by, do the same thing on the other side. So try SNO2, and then check with the video. Okay, so I set it up. We don't know the charge on the tin ion yet. The oxide ion is always 2 negative, and so I'm looking for the Roman numeral. So I can call the the oxide charge here negative 2, put a 1 there and an x, so 1 times x plus 2 times negative 2 will equal 0, x minus 4 equals 0, and so x equals 4. Or I could just uncross and get positive 2 up here and negative 1 there. But when I check, the oxide ion is actually negative 2, so I'm going to have to double that to get negative 2, so I'm going to have to multiply this by 2 to get positive 4. And so you can see that either way, the correct answer is tin 4 oxide. Okay, try G and H, and I and J. Okay, and so you'll see we have potassium and the hydroxide ion. KOH is called potassium hydroxide. I put the brackets in here to be clear about the polyatomic ion immediately after the metal. And so we see we have the sodium ion and then this HCO3 negative 1 ion. If you check your polyatomic ion list, you'll see that that ion can have the name hydrogen carbonate, which actually takes two words to say. Or we could replace hydrogen carbonate with bicarbonate. And so this compound, NaHCO3, is called sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. I gave you I and J because they look so similar, but I wanted to point out the subtlety here. Inside the brackets is where we find the polyatomic ion, or the atoms involved in that ion. And so it's the ClO negative 1 ion, as opposed to the ClO2 negative 1 ion in this question. Magnesium is 2 positive in both cases. It's not multivalent, and so we don't need a Roman numeral. And finish with magnesium hypochlorite, which is the name of this ion and magnesium chloride. Now, I realize the only thing I didn't do, I didn't do an example with uh, silver or zinc. So if you were to come across this formula, what would you call this compound? And so you can see the name is silver nitrate. So I'd just like to point out there's no Roman numeral. So even though silver and also zinc are found in the transition metals, they are not multivalent. And so you need to memorize the charge for each of those when they're forming ions. And you can see here that it's silver 1 and with the nitrate ion. And so, but we don't put a Roman numeral because silver only ever forms positive 1 ions. And when you do zinc, zinc involved in an ionic compound will not have a Roman numeral. But you'll need to remember that the charge is 2 positive. Okay, that's it for ionic compounds.